Um, but uh, let's start with kind of there's two different methods for selecting for or against yeast traits. Uh, the first is hybridiza hybridization, and the second is going to be me mechanical manipulation, which we'll focus a little bit more in uh, for the majority of this topic. So hybridization is the very traditional way of going about things. We've been, you know, doing this since Mendel, right? Yeah, and a little his, Mendelian and selection. In his peas, yeah. So hybridizing, you know, hybridizing plants, um, hybridizing uh, dogs is, I guess, another great example. But yeah, the bottom line is that this is done throughout um, generations and generations of breeding, trying to select for the traits that you want um, and then discarding the traits that you don't want. And you know, some of the downsides to this process are that, yes, it is a very, very slow, time-consuming process. Um, you have a lot of variation in the results that you're getting. And there is always a random chance of getting something unexpected that you really enjoy out of it. And that's how actually a lot of new yeast strains that we have today have kind of come about. Um, not necessarily on purpose, but a lot of the breweries historically, especially American breweries that have uh, proprietary uh, yeast strains right now, they had wild yeast uh, interacting with yeasts that are traditional over many, many, many years. Years, and then they were able to select, you know, against batches that sucked and four batches that they liked. And so they ended up with their own house strain that's kind of a genetic yeah. mix of the two. But anyways, that, that was how yeast was selected for, uh, you know, over time. And a lot of yeast that we have, especially like uh, Americanized lager strains are lager yeasts that came over from Germany, uh, you know, during the great brewery revolutions yep. that we had pre-1900s. And uh, they just interacted with wild yeast because there's no perfect way to store yeast back then. Yeah, and, uh, we didn't they, have lager yeast here. Yeah, and they just, they, they mold it. Even today's lager yeast in like old world German, breeze have hybridized over the last hundreds of years and so that's why we kind of don't have perfect lager and ale yeasts anymore they're yep. all this mixed genetic mess yep <laughs> so we've talked about hybridization which is this uh, you know this mixed gene pool um, where you can add certain yeast with certain uh, properties but let's also talk about mechanical mechanical manipulation which has become very very popular since uh, just the last few years. Yeah, I mean, in, in yeast specifically the last few years, but I want to say we, we really started doing this research in like the mid-1990s, maybe early 2000s. So we've been messing with genetics for a while, but uh, it recently we've gotten good at it, especially when it comes to yeast, and so it's very, very accessible. Uh, and let's talk about mechanical manipulation specifically for yeasts that we have right now, which are the sundew and the bonanza and how that came to be and uh, what's cool about it and what that means for the future. Yeah, I w went to Eastern for biology and we, uh, we had this brand new thing called the CRISPR-Cas pathway that came out and it has to do with gene editing. And what, what they found is that uh, in certain bacteria, there were um, these pathways and these proteins that could actually go into a piece of DNA um, and then actually cut out specific parts of that DNA um, that, and then you could use that to either put into something else or just take or, or remove entirely um, from another organism. And uh, what made this kind of mind blowing is that uh, the original thing that we learned about was, was, whoa, we could actually find like certain genes that cause diseases in humans and potentially remove those. Um, but now here we are four or five years later and making and, even better use out of it. And some brewers got a hold of it. We're not saving people, but we are making better beer here. <laughs> yeah, right. And some brewers got to get a hold of it. And they're like, wait, what? So we don't have to have clove in our beer? Yeah. So specifically what we're talking about here is the CRISPR-Cas9 system. And that's probably the simplest uh, and most basic form of the uh, any of the CRISPR-Cas uh, gene editing tools that we have because it can specifically target a certain spot on the DNA sequence. Sequence, um, using what's called guide RNA. That guide RNA basically finds the genetic code that uh, that codes for right before where you want to cut and right after where you want to cut, and it attaches a protein called the Cas9 protein, and that is just a clean slice in that area, and then it makes the cell freak out and go like, hey, I've got to fill in this uh, genetic material. So it fills it in with random stuff, and uh, that could code for nothing, probably usually codes for nothing, but every once in a while it might code for something. Um, and so you do this over and over and over again until you get a product that you want um, that's viable, sustainable, and uh, all of a sudden you have a yeast that has all the same flavors that it had before, but without, specifically in this case, phenol producing uh, uh, proteins. So let's let's talk about what all this entails. First of all, it entails knowing the G, the DNA sequence that codes for uh, certain production of uh, you know in this case a certain f like phenol production. Um, and uh, we're specifically focusing on four vinyl guaiacol, which is uh, the, the clove phenol. Now the reason that this is important for these is because you have very very flavorful yeast that we're working with. Um, in the bonanza, the case is that's the fine Stefan yeast strain, but we're able to cut out 
that four vinyl glycol production um, and maybe some other phenol productions that are very dominant in the flavor. And so by removing those, we're kind of able to uncover the other flavors. Yeah, which is where the, uh, the sundew yeast comes from. And that one, um, they actually say that it's got a really nice uh, berry melon um, profile to it. Um, and that one, we can't we couldn't quite figure out exactly what like the base strain was that they, they used for it, but we figured yeah. it's some Belgian strain, probably an Abbey strain, and um, and by removing that uh, that clove uh, uh, gene that produce or the gene that produces the clove flavor, there we go. That's yeah. what, that's how I should say the that. phenolic producing gene. Um, you actually let all those like really melony berry type flavors come to the surface um, that would normally be masked by that strong clove uh, production. Let's go on to some uh, other applications that might happen in the near future and <laughs> other ways we might be able to uh, see things. Somebody shut down this mRNA. <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh, we might be able to see some stuff get manipulated in the future. Um, this is complete speculation. I don't know if it's been done or is being worked on being done. Uh, but one of the things that comes to my mind is just deletion of the uh, gene that produces uh, STA1 or the STA1 <laughs> genes. That's the one that's produces uh, amylase enzyme that'll basically super attenuate your beers. Um, I feel like deleting that will open up a few strains um, to people that uh, might be con have concern about them uh, creating bottle bombs. Get some so. saisons that are thick with three C's. Yeah. What I see this leading into is basically fast tracking our way through getting new yeasts. Yeah. Where before it was kind of like random, like, hey, we found this new yeast or hey, we've been like blending these yeast for forever and now we have this new yeast this yeah. is kind of a fast track to be like hey can we create this flavor like mm -hmm. what else can we do and so yeah. it's kind of like i think we're going to see that curve where we saw with hops for a while where hops were like you know flavors of hops were like this yeah. for a while and then all of a sudden we figured out you know how to you know organize plots and breed in a certain way sure. that you selected for a certain uh, you know oil production and all of a sudden we we're like yeah anyways yeah that sums up that topic biology pickup line oh god oh god <laughs> Hey, hey, baby, you're one, you're one tall genetic sequence. I wish I was DNA helicase so I could unzip your genes. Uh, Tell uh, me how many of you were turned on by that. Mm.